Good morning, everyone. This is Laurel Bader at the NEMSIS SAC. Today is Thursday, August 17th at 10 a.m. Today's training is on our new public version three motor vehicle crash dashboard. Uh, we're going to go through just a few things today. Uh, where to find the dashboard, uh, what sort of what's on it and how to use it, and then some information on how to uh, subscribe to reports or export reports to a PDF. And then if anyone has any questions or feedback at that point, we'll definitely be, uh, I'll definitely be open to hearing it. Um, we're always looking for ways to do a better job. So the first way that you can find the report is just right off the home page. It's in our, um, our hero images at the top. So it's uh, the second item right now is our public motor vehicle crash dashboard. So you can click on that when it comes around or uh, you can always go to view reports and public reports to find a complete list of all of the publicly available reports we offer. Um, this was the version 3 dashboard, so it's going to be located under version 3. And then it's just right at the top since it's our newest dashboard. Um, if you notice, there's the link to the dashboard right here, but there's also a link to a user guide. Um, so if you're on your own using this and you have a question, you don't want to send an email to me, uh, I would encourage you to check out the user guide. It's um, located on our Confluence site. So it's got a nice table of contents to maybe help you find what you're curious about. And at the very bottom of the page, there's a space to add comments, and you can add comments anonymously. So if you have any um, suggestions, changes, or questions, you can add a comment there. And that's just one more way in which we could um, help answer questions or uh, address any concerns you might have. There's also contact information for me and Kevin. Uh, we're the report developers here, so we um, have created all of the cool Tableau reports that we have, and we're both a great resource if you have any questions about any of our reports or really any of the data within them. So that's the user guide, which hopefully is a good resource for you. Um, and then we have the dashboard itself, which is just this link at the top here, V3 Public Motor Vehicle Crash Dashboard. So if you click that, dashboard will open in a separate window. Uh, it might take just a moment to load. Uh, we have quite a lot of data already in version 3, so uh, not quite instant. Um, again, the link to that user guide is also on this page right here. Um, so this dashboard is just one page, and it has a lot of really um, great overview information on all NEMSIS activations related to a motor vehicle crash. So currently, that is um, 161,000 activations, which uh, covers 1,400 EMS agencies in about 20 states and territories. Um, so these numbers are going to be growing all the time as more states begin submitting to the TAC and as we amass more activations. Um, but for right now, it's just 161,000. We have some filters here to sort of help dig into the data. We have a uh, unit dispatch date. We have all the way from 2014 through the end of this year, although we should only have valid records up through today. And then for type, you can stratify the type of motor vehicle accident. So this bicycle would be like a bicycle and a car or we have a bus or pedestrian and a car. Um, this is sort of the implicit, all of these involve some sort of car or motor vehicle, even if it's pedestrian or bicycle. You can use this to sort of subset the data. This is based on um, the ICD-10 code we received. So that indicated that a car was involved with a motorcycle that would end up in the motorcycle category. Um, but if we just want to stay and look at all of them, you can see that we have a, a, a nice uh, sort of demographic breakdown on uh, the patients, as well as some information on the time of day, time of week, month, and year. Um, you can see in the year trend, there's sort of a growth over time. This is um, mostly uh, the NEMSIS tag receiving more records. So you can see there's quite a spike in May. So. It is still, there are still some trends that can be picked out. Um, like most of the dashboards we, we build, everything is clickable. So if you were to click on any of these 
age ranges, it would filter the rest of the data down. So I clicked on 15 to 19. This is where the scorecard at the top comes in handy. You can see that this is only 15,000 activations, and you can see what that looks like visually compared to the entire data set of 161. Same thing happened with the EMS agencies, and it would have changed the states if, of course, that filter had ruled out any states. Um, so that might be a good way to sort of explore the data set and maybe get more details about a specific patient group. Um, other ways to select things are you can drag a box over items to select multiple things at once. Or you could also um, use the control key on your keyboard. So if you select, maybe you want to look at everyone under 20, you could select 15 to 19, and then hold down control and select the rest of those age groups. That one that says five years is mislabeled. It is actually five to nine years. I will have to go in and fix that right after this call. Um, but that's just how selections work. Just click and <laughs> click and drop. <laughs> um, so next we have the incident details section. And this just provides a little bit of information about maybe what exactly happened at this, uh, at this motor vehicle accident. So we have some uh, service times for um, EMS. So this, is, this drop down allows you to choose which time you want to look at. It starts on scene time. This is the amount of time that they spent on scene, and you can see that there's a nice distribution there. Um, scene response, this is the time to the scene. And we have transport time to from the scene to wherever the final destination is. Uh, we did rule out any um, activations in which there was no transport, so there isn't, you're not seeing all of the null values and zeros here. Um, so the next, the next visualization here is the probability of survival. Uh, this metric is um, based on uh, the revised trauma score, which is uh, sort of a calculation based on some vital signs and other metrics of how severely injured a patient is. And it corresponds to a, a, a rough probability of survival. Um, so the, the red boxes here uh, for 7.1% and less than 36 0.1%. Um, these are patients that uh, would be severely injured and should be transported to a level one trauma center. So they're they're um, sort of highlighted in red. But as you can see, most of the most of the patients that we have records for are in the uh, not severely injured section here at the very end. They have a, a high probability of survival. Um, but the, the, the use case for this would be to maybe see how some of these other metrics differ for your uh, severely injured patients. You could select um, both of these red boxes and be able to sort of see how some of these metrics are, are differing. So just right now, I can see that there's a pretty significant bias towards Friday evening for these patients. And, you can maybe see that more of them are male than female. For example, some of these age categories, we don't even have any, um, any records. I'll click out of that. So this next bar chart here, injury risk factor, um, is a nemesis element that collects um, just some very specific uh, whether or not an activation falls into some very specific criteria that would maybe classify a patient as uh, a higher risk. Um, so what we've done is we've pulled all of the, um, the values of this that would be specifically related to a motor vehicle accident, and then just uh, have on a bar chart what percentage of our motor vehicle activations fall into these groups. They all have um, sort of longer titles, so you'll want to use the mass over feature to be able to read the entire title. Um, 
you can kind of see how some of them are just very lengthy. Um, but that might be, so if you were interested in data on maybe in particular severe motorcycle crashes, that is one um, element that's captured under injury risk factors. So that might be a good way to filter into the data and take a closer look at those, at those patients. Um, and then last for incident details is drug and alcohol indication. So just right in the corner here, we have this uh, raw percent. This is um, just out of all of our activations for motor vehicle crashes, what percentage of those had any type of drug or alcohol indication? So it's about four and a half percent. And then we have the breakdown of, of uh, what that specific indication was, whether it was uh, the patient admitting to alcohol use or uh, law enforcement has done a test or just uh, drug paraphernalia at the scene. Um, so you, that further breaks it down. And if you really wanted to click into some of that, you could maybe try and separate out the alcohol indications and the drug indications to sort of look at different patient groups. Um, the last section is uh, geography. And on this public version, it's a little, um, it's a kind of kind of non-specific. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we can't uh, provide publicly um, a lot of geographic measures, but we can sort of uh, provide maybe how urban or rural the area was that the accident occurred in. So, as you can see, um, the majority of these traffic accidents occur in urban settings, um, and then the rest in suburban to wilderness areas that are probably have less roads and people moving <laughs> not at as high of speeds. <laughs> so that's the dashboard itself. Um, I would, I mean, if you're going to take a look at this, I would encourage you to click around and uh, play with the filters and see what sort of conclusions you could draw. If you have any questions about maybe a further data inquiry based on uh, what you see on this dashboard, uh, definitely let us know. We're always looking for ways to sort of bring data to people and, and help people answer questions. Um, so if, if you have any great questions that arise out of this, please feel free to ask us for more details. Um, the other thing I wanted to sort of remind everyone about was how to um, sort of export this data to a PDF or an image so that you could maybe share it or, or transform it in some way. Um, so at the bottom of this dashboard here, we have this download button, and you have the ability to um, to download the workbook as a PDF or an image. Um, I'm fairly certain that that cross tab and data would um, be great out for most people. Um, I probably logged in as myself with admin rights. But if you click on PDF, you can choose. Uh, they give you a couple of options for how to um, export it. You can export the whole dashboard just as sort of an image. And then you'll just see what um, sort of what it looks like on the web. So I'll go ahead and download that one. So you can see it sort of brings up just a PDF of whatever filters you have selected and just an image of how all of those visualizations looked at a static point in time. If you did click into some filters or change the dates, it would show you basically exactly what you had been looking at on the web only in a PDF form. Um, we did size this dashboard um, to fit uh, fairly well on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So if you were interested in printing this out and using it in some way, uh, it should hopefully print pretty nicely. So the other option for exporting the data is to do sheets in this dashboard. Um, now this can be useful if you maybe wanted to look closer at say the time series visualization where you can only select one um, service time at a time. We're going to go ahead and hit download and I'll show you how this one generates. Um, this might be useful if you're if you're wanting to save or share a specific piece of the dashboard. Um, so here's that. It, uh, it's going to put every one of those little bars and visualizations on its own page. So there's the total activations, and the agencies, 
state, it's the age, race information. Scroll down. It'll do all the times on a, on a full page. Um, and it also includes the legends for everything. So back on that screen where, where I generated this PDF, there is an option to select um, only the sheets you're interested in. So you can unselect maybe the scorecards if you don't want those or get rid of the age and gender one. Maybe you don't want to look at urbanity. You can sort of pick and choose which visualizations are meaningful to you when you do this download PDF. And then there's also the option to just download an image, which again, like that first PDF, I think we'll just generate a um, an image of what the dashboard looks like at that at that one moment in time. So there is the image, basically the same as the PDF. For the rest of these buttons at the bottom, there's one to share that will generate a link. And then um, these, uh, the left side buttons, undo, review, revert, refresh, and pause, are useful if you've made a lot of selections on the dashboard. If you click revert, it will return the dashboard to whatever filter selections um, it's set to when you open it. So for this one, it would be no filters. And then undo and redo, um, you can, will work for anything you've clicked on or selected. Refresh will refresh the data on the dashboard. And then pause will uh, pause it from stop it from updating every time you click. So if I click on urban, it's going to stop and refresh. And so if you wanted to make a lot of selections, it might make sense to pause the updating and then make your selections. And then hit resume. Anyway, that is a basic overview of the dashboard and how it works and what it's got on it. We also have a version of this for state data managers um, that has a little bit more geographic information, but it's essentially mostly the same. Uh, so if any of you have access to that, um, that one might be more informative in some ways. Uh, does anyone have any questions about this or any feedback? Thanks, viewer three. <laughs> I'm not sure who you are. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of the other reports that we offer? Okay, well, I have, I have the whole rest of the hour reserved for this, but if no one has any questions, I, I guess I'll wrap it up here. Um, thank you for joining the call. Um, if you think of anything later, uh, please don't hesitate to send, send us an email or uh, region-specific display. So we do have a, a version of this for NHTSA regions um, that's just specifically for uh, the NHTSA regional directors but not for any other types of regions. Um, I did talk with uh, one state a couple of weeks ago about um, having a dashboard that was able to um, show them the regions of their state rather than just uh, maybe the county, uh, but we haven't really done anything with that yet. Uh, what were you thinking in terms of region? Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, so we, we are sort of working on maybe, um, uh, yeah, I can see why you'd want regions if you're from Orange County. Um, <laughs> uh, so for the state users, um, 
we do sort of allow them to get down that level of detail, but for the public, um, we uh, we're still sort of working on maybe maybe allowing the public to see state level data. Um, so it's uh, it's um, it's kind of difficult. We have a lot of rules about what data we can and can't share. Um, but we are we are looking into maybe sharing better geographic data. Cool. Um, well, if anyone ever has any questions for any of us, uh, on our new website, we have the staff contact page. It's like right at the top of every page of our website. You click on it, it takes you to this cool page of the website with all of our photos, which is not weird at all. And there's Kevin, there's me. So if you have any questions about any of our Tableau reports, we'd be happy to answer them. If you're looking for uh, some EMSIS data, Clay can definitely help you out. And everyone else here would be glad to help you with other items if you have any other items you need help with. But please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or requests or feedback. Um, next month, uh, the training is going to be on a uh, public dashboard that looks at naloxone administration. Uh, so it's still in development and it will definitely be released. So I would encourage you all to come back next month. It's the third Thursday in September at 10 a.m. So that'll be September 21st. Add it to your calendars. Um, thank you for thank you for joining me today. Um, I hope I answered any questions you have, and I hope you like the dashboard. <laughs>